Hello, my name is Biff Farrell, and I am the Director of Video Production at Pellissippi State Community College, which is located in wonderful Knoxville, Tennessee. The Video Production Department is part of Media Technologies. Media Technologies houses communication, graphic design, photography, web technology, and of course video production. And we are housed in the wonderful Bagwell Center for Media and Art. So you Pellissippi Media students are really lucky to have such a wonderful facility. This module is going to cover editing to the beat using Final Cut Pro version 7. Yes, I know that Final Cut Pro X is out, but is X really pro or not? The jury is still out. I'm sure one day it will be, but right now, any professional editor who has stuff appearing on broadcast television is either using the Avid or Final Cut Pro version 7. Maybe that'll change in the future. Uh, the technical concepts that we will introduce you to are organizing your footage, and really what that means is, is how to effectively preview your footage quickly and your, your music files. We will go over three-point editing. I'll teach you about creating and using a slug. We will go over locking audio tracks. We will introduce you to the blade tool and the active shortcut on the fly shortcut for the blade tool which is control V is in Victor we will remap the keyboard quickly so we can just click on a key instead of having to use the mouse and we will of course show you how to use the replace edit tool so I'll switch over here to Final Cut Pro okay so here's the Final Cut Pro interface and you student this is geared for the students in my class currently this semester so we're gonna brush over some of the fine details I'll cover those in class, but this is just to give you an overview of what editing to the beat is. And of course, most of you can figure out what editing to the beat is just by listening to the title. Okay, so you guys get it right. You're going to make your visuals match the beat of the song. Of course, this song has got two different beats. One's a snare, one's a bass drum. I went with the snare drum, but the first thing that I've done is I've loaded up my music here in the canvas window. Okay, so to do that, you just double click on the song after you've imported it in. It loads it up. Okay, if I want to see the beginning and end of my song, I can hit Shift Z. Shift Z snaps media into view. It works in the timeline as well. Shift Z snaps my media into view. Okay, um, this clip up here in the viewer the audio has already been marked with an in point and an out point to do that you can hit X okay that's gonna put an in at the beginning of the media and an out at the end of the media sometimes though you're gonna to wanna to create your own in point by hitting I moving the position indicator and then hitting O so you've got an in point and an out point set manually okay to get rid of the in point I can hit option I to get rid of the out point I can hit option O to put an in point and an out point at the beginning and end, of course, you'll hit X. To get rid of those, you can hit option X. So option gets rid of, and then I, O, and X puts the in point, out point, and both in and out points in, respectively. So I'm going to hit X. I'm going to move my position indicator over to the timeline. I'm just going to make another version of this. I'll hit I to make an in point. Don't really have to, but I will. And I'll hit red here for an overwrite. So now I've got my audio in the timeline and it looks pretty good now I'm gonna mark the audio with an endpoint and an outpoint so I could hit arrow up and hit I and arrow down and hit O however if I put my position indicator so it's on top of the media I can just hit X and it it marks it with a, a, an endpoint at the beginning and the end okay so that looks pretty good all right Next, we're going to load up a slug, all right? So I'm going to go down here and go to slug and click on it. And a slug is just a piece of black. Okay, now the slug does have audio. So I don't want to replace my music with the blank audio from the slug. So I will disconnect these audio patches. So currently, A1 and A2 are no longer targeted to receive the audio. Okay, because this slug up here in the viewer, it's got a video signal, which is black, and then it's got two kind of blank or dummy audio tracks. But I've temporarily disabled 
the audio tracks in the timeline by cutting them off. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the out point up here in the viewer by hitting Option I, or I'm sorry, Option O, and that erases the out point. So now I'm set up to do a three point edit, which is the professional way to do an edit. I'll hit overwrite here. And so I've now put the slug on top of the audio, and it's perfect. Okay, but I, I want to protect those audio tracks further by locking them. So I just click on the little lock icon, and it gives you these wonderful diagonaling lines, the very obvious visual icon that those tracks have now been locked. Okay. I'm going to go put my position indicator over here beyond the beginning of the song, and I'm going to blade this thing up. Okay, now the blade tool works in three different ways. I can hit B for blade. The blade tool subsequently is over here in the toolbars. It looks like a razor blade. It's right above the magnifying glass. I can click and it will blade up my slug. Okay, I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z. Now if I hit BB, it goes into all blade. And if things are unlocked, when I click, it'll blade everything. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to lock them back. So you've got regular blade tool and then all blade tool. I'm going to hit A to go back to this arrow tool. Okay, so, but what I want to do is I want to use control V to blade this thing while it is playing. Because then I have to, like, I'm going to hold down control with my left index finger. And I'm going to tap the V key on the beat. Okay, and again, this song's got two different beats, but I'm going to go with the snare drum again. But I'm going to hit the space bar to play, hold down control. I skip the first couple beats because I want to put a graphic up. And I made a couple mistakes there at the end on purpose. Alright, so I'm going to stop that and you'll see that, voila, it has now been bladed up. Okay, but look, here at the end, I put in a couple extra blade points, and you can see that there's no beats. So I'm going to go to my arrow tool by hitting A, and I'm going to select those mistakes, and I'm going to hit Delete, and then I can stretch out the slug, because it's got this automatic trim tool function. Okay, so I just, I undid it, I, uh, sorry, I, uh, I undid the erroneous blade points by highlighting them, and hitting delete. Okay, so you can stretch the media out. Now, inevitably, what you guys are going to do, because you guys are students, is that you're going to forget to lock your audio tracks, and you're going to end up having these blade points in your audio. And it's like, oh no, do I have to redo it? Well, no, I can just delete those erroneous blade points, and I can stretch the music back out. Okay, so this is kind of this one of the attributes of, of non-linear editing. Okay, so this would be a good point to maybe hit save, command S, um, because we've been working pretty hard. I'm going to go back to frame one of the music. Now, remember, arrow up and down will jump from edit point to edit point. So arrow up and down are really important to use. I'm going to park on frame number one of the, the black slug, the first razor bladed section of the black slug. And I'm going to slide over here and load up a clip, and I want this beautiful sunset shot over Amsterdam. And you should preview all of the footage. This is pretty important, okay? You need to be very organized. As an editor, you need to know exactly what footage is where and which shots are going to work. Now, this is, in my opinion, the strongest shot of all 20-some-odd shots that I have here. So I'm going to start with my strongest shot. Okay, and remember, if I hit J, it'll play the shot backwards. Okay, if I hit J twice, it plays it backwards double time. If I hit L, it'll play it forward. If I hit L twice, three times, it plays it fast forward. Okay, K pauses it. So I'm going to go back and kind of park on this little marker to indicate the first frame of the shot. So... Three-point edits are the way to professionally edit. However, with this particular workflow using replace edit, we don't need any in points or out points. 
We just need to place the position indicator where we need it to be to do what we want it to do. So for instance, I want this shot to start here, so I've put the position indicator here. In the timeline, remember, we're on frame one of this piece of black. Now, over here in the canvas window, okay, you've got this little blue icon at the bottom left, and that is your replace edit icon. So for now, I'm going to click on it, and it replaced the slug with the shot. Okay, that's pretty cool. We're going to do one more before we go change the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to click on the timeline, make it active. I'm going to hit arrow down, and I'll go load up another shot here. Okay, so I can, you know, I can use the arrow keys and go one frame at a time. Um, I can hit home and end and go from frame one to the, the last frame if I want to. Home, there's, there's end, there's home. Okay. So I'm going to hit replace edit again, and it's going to replace this piece of black in the timeline with this shot. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and park on the next piece of black. Okay, so I want to remap the keyboard, though, because I don't like clicking on this blue icon. It takes too much time, and when I, when I do click on that, the canvas window becomes active, and then I have to click back on the timeline window. So I'm going to save a lot of time by doing this. Going to Tools. Going to keyboard layout and sliding over to customize okay here's the keyboard layout so professional editors will map the keyboard so that they're in complete control okay this is great so if I if I'm gonna edit for you know one of the high-end places in Knoxville I can go there on Monday Wednesday and Friday and I can load up my keyboard settings and then on Tuesday and Thursday when I go edit somewhere else I'll load up my keyboard settings at that facility, okay? Be careful though, because previous editors might have their keyboard setting, settings loaded up, so you have to check them. But the first thing that I need to do is go to the bottom left and unlock the keyboard. And now I'm going to open up the editing option, you know, this disclosure triangle, and I'm going to slip on down to replace edit, re replace clip. And I'm going to click and drag this. I, you know, you can put it wherever you want to, but I'm going to plop it on R, because replace, edit, and R makes sense to me. Now, R is also the shortcut for ripple edit, but, you know, we're, for now we're going to put it on R. And I'm going to lock it back, and I'm going to close it. Okay, and so now the shortcut keyboard command will work with whenever I hit it. So I'm going to go to the first frame of the next piece of black, and now I can just hit R and it put that clip in. Okay, hit arrow down, go to the next frame of black. I'll load up a shot of these, these students walking around this flower here. I'll hit R again. Okay, I'll go to the, hit arrow down, go to the next frame of black. I'll load up, you know, a shot of this boat coming through the canal. Okay, that's great. I'll hit R. Okay, that replaced it with black, or re re replaced the black with the shot. I'll hit arrow down, and I think you guys get it, right? I'm going to put this shot of these bridges here. Okay, hit R. And then we'll we'll do one more before we transcend time and space. You know, the break dancers. Everybody likes break dancing, right? So there are the break dancers, and I'll hit R again. And, you know, we will practice this in class. But now we've got this slim down version. Okay, so we're well on our way. We, we've got some problems because it, it might not be perfect, but we can touch it up in post. All right, so that is re the Replace Edit tool. And I think we're going to end the module here in the essence of time. There will be another um, module coming up. So you guys have done great, and we'll review this in class. Thanks.